Dog Works Radio is sponsored by Alaska Dog Works. Check out their website at alaskadogworks.com. You can support this podcast on patreon.com forward slash first paw media. From First Paw Media, sponsored by First Paw Coffee Company, this is the Dog Driver Show. Visit our website at dogworksradio.com. Now here are your hosts, Robert Forto and Kurosh Parto. Hello and welcome everybody. This is Robert and I'm here with my co-host KP and we are the Dog Driver Podcast. Be sure to check us out online by going to dogworksradio.com. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and if you are thinking about a guest that uh, should be on our show, send us a message and we'll make sure that they are on our schedule. Today we're talking to a guest in Anchorage. It's going to be a very unique show. We're talking about a sled dog video game. Who do we have, KP? Uh, as you said, usually we have uh, dog drivers, open class, or uh, you know, monosport or equipment uh, uh, producers. You know, uh, and uh, but today we have Paul Wells. Uh, Paul is actually a pilot, commercial pilot. However, uh, he is married to sled dog sport uh, through his wife Kim Wells, who is a very very competitive six dog driver in our circuit in Alaska. And Paul has developed actually a video game, a mushing game, uh, and we're going to talk about that. Uh, Paul, welcome to the show, and tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, uh, my name is Paul Wells, and of course, like you said, I am married to Kim Wells. She's uh, number two, I think, with Israel right now, and the six dog sprints. Uh, we have ten dogs of our own. Uh, you know, I go through all the names, but it take a little time. We'll just move on to. Uh, that's what inspired me to do something for sled dogs. And we love our dogs. We love to take care of them. They're spoiled rotten. Uh, and we just want to do the best to take care of our dogs. And we want to encourage everybody else to do the same thing. And that's what got me motivated to make this sled, sled dog sports game on Roblox. So tell us about the, the game. Okay. It's sled dog sports. Uh, it's on, it's hosted by the company Roblox. Uh, it's uh, children's, you know, a lot of, kids playing these Roblox games, some adults. Um, you go into the game uh, to Roblox, you put the app on your phone, and then you type in the search sled, then space dogs, then space sports, and then that, that'll lead you to the game. You go into the game and you'll see a sledding expert, which will answer some questions for you on how to get the game going. And once you get going, you get a free uh, two-dog sled, three cans of dog food, and that gives your dogs energy during the race. Well, you have a start and a finish, and there's a time grace, and it, it disappears. We're getting a permanent board later on, and just bear with us. We are continually updating this this game. Um, you can go into the store. You can purchase dog food, dog sled, dog waters, more dogs, and different colored sleds. Um, but you don't have to, to, to enjoy the race. And you go into the start line, and you meet the race coordinator once you get to the start line. And the race coordinator, you hold your... Uh, finger down on the button or you hold your mouse button down and that'll load your sled up and you go jump on your sled and race around the track and it'll give you a time at the end of the race when there's other people in there you see how you measure up against everybody else just like in a sled dog race um our goal for the game though really is to support the you know ethical treatment of sled dogs and everything else and, and we want to encourage everybody to treat their dogs well by offering anything this game makes we'll donate uh we're going to give initially 10 percent of the proceeds away five percent will go to the top three mushers the top three mushers in the sled dog community that are voted by the sled dog community that treat their dogs the best will share an even split of two and a half percent another three mushers randomly who are members of isdra will also get a share of two and a half percent to help feed their dogs and take care of them uh, the other 5% is Go going to a pancreatic cancer group called Project Purple. They're a fantastic operation. Uh, they they really help people out with family members who are going through pancreatic cancer. And so we wanted to support them. Um, so we put that up there, just like we have another. And when you go in the game, you'll see Dog Works Radio, Mr. Forto's on there. Um, and it is. It's a fun game. We're developing more tracks as we speak. A new update will be coming out December 1st. AWP, uh, AWP Gaming is the 
the game company that helps me do this, and we're in promotion with them. Um, and they helped us develop this game. They're a fantastic company to work with. Uh, their people are extremely helpful, and they're, like I said, I, I couldn't ask for a better group to help me do this. Um, we hope everybody enjoys this game and gets an understanding of, of how much people can actually get to where they love this sport. Uh, so, Paul, uh, you are a uh, professional commercial pilot. How did you start thinking about starting a video game uh, with the sled dogs? How did the idea come up? Well, I, it just, I was, you know, I, it, actually I was just sitting around and I, I, I was thinking, how can we encourage people, you know, to treat the dogs like we treat our dogs, right? We know, Courage, we know you treat your dogs fantastic. And most of them, every musher we know does the best they can to take care of their dogs and give them the best of care. And we just want to give more incentive to do even a better job if they can. And this is, the, the, it came to mind that, hey, if we did this, we can add an incentive for mushers to to compete even in the, take, the care of their dogs and how well they take care of them. So sled, space, dog, slace, uh, space, sport uh, is the name of the, uh, of the basically game uh, in Roblox. Uh, and how long did it take to develop the software and this uh, game? Oh, it's been a it's been a, a work in progress. I'd say it's taken ooh, pretty good two, three, four months. Most games aren't as complex. This is the first game of its type ever made. Okay, there has never been a an easy to run dog race that pretty much anybody can get in and do. Uh, you know, sledding, especially mushing. I don't know of any other mushing game like this. So I've never seen one. So uh, we think we're the first to do this. And like I said, we're going to, we've got multiple ideas coming out. And we have, and like I said, robot, uh, AWP gaming and their developers who are helping me with this are, are working all the time to try and make this better and better. Um, and uh, so you'll have multiple experiences. We're even going to try a, a mini Iditarod segment. So you can go into compete in a mini Iditarod. So you'd have different phases, different tracks every day, and you have to complete 13 phases to complete the mini Iditarod. So that is cool. Do you have, of course, hours of uh, you personally hours and hours of uh, uh, invested time in this uh, in this game? How many hours do you think you've put personally to develop this? Oh, in the development, coming up with the ideas and things of that sort. Actually, put in you know pretty good, pretty good amount of hours. Uh, I mean, uh, discussing the options and what we can do. Uh, but you know, most of the heavy lifting's been done by AWP Gaming, uh, the group that helps me develop this game. They're like I said, they they've helped immensely. They're they're the computer programmers and gurus, and uh, they'll go in and you you have an idea, you go into AWP Gaming. If you have an idea for a game, well, they're there to help you produce it. And uh, can people buy sponsorship in the game? Um, I know that when I opened the app and I tried to play uh, to play because I'm I'm not very good at it. I noticed uh, I noticed different brands of dog food and some other uh, dog related items as uh, banners or as you know uh, buildings or uh, stores yeah. in the game. How can um, someone get involved in the game if they want to be part of it excuse me um well you know if they if they want to have a banner or something up there we'll, we'll discuss that with them personally everything that's in there that you see right now are good friends and good people in the communities that we've come across during the time and we shot the ideas past some people in different areas and they gave us some ideas back and uh and we did we don't we didn't charge them anything for these banners as you know um, we're doing it. We do that for our friends and our and the good people in the mushroom community and the people who've had some really good input. Um, and then, uh, you know, that'll change over time. There'll be a few new ones, uh, here and there. Uh, but if they want to support sled dog sports and what we're doing and that, then they can feel free to contact me either through the website, um, on there, but we're also got a Facebook site that is also sled then dog then sports. What is the objective? What is the long-term plan for this game, Paul? 
uh, the long term is to continue to give people different things to do and learn about mushing. I mean, even the history of mushing, if we can go through it and teach kids that how mushing and, and what, how it was such an important part of, of course, Alaska and the serum run for the Iditarod, you know, that's how that all started. And, and get them, get them going and get them interested in it, interested in it and understand that these dogs love to run. This is what they live for. We all know that. And we love to let them run. And that's how we do it. We do it by mushing and we do it by taking care of them. And so that's, uh, in the long run, we're going to see a lot of different tracks. Uh, we'll have a, a leaderboard that's world ranked for everybody in the world that'll go for a month running. And then every month it'll refresh and then everybody gets a chance to be number one in the world again. So to get them the idea of competitive dog mushing and how it works and that it can be done, you know, safely and, and, uh, in a responsible manner. Is this game only play, uh, played on uh, devices like uh, iPad and iPhone, or you can be on PC also? Actually, uh, Roblox is a, a great company for this because it can be played on an iPhone, it can be played on an iPad, a PC, um, Android, any any kind of device. It, it, they, they stretch uh, even to PlayStation. Uh, you know, Roblox is across every device. That is uh, that is uh, interesting. So, is the app? If you go to the app store, let's say I, you know, I have an iPhone, and if you, I want to uh, get that in an app store, do I have to buy the game, or is a free game at this point? Uh, Roblox, you can load on your phone for free from the app store, and you go into the game. Everything is free, and uh, all we, you know, like I said, just keep in mind if you do help, then a portion of whatever you buy inside of sled dog sports will be going to mushers and project purple so um and and if you go in once you get the app loaded on your phone you load up you go into the sled dog sports page and uh or their, the game site which it'll load on your phone and it'll spawn you right in the game and so once you spawn you go and get a sled or go into the store click and hold on something if you want to buy it click and hold on anything to get anything accomplished and that way you build your sled and you get to go race and so that's how we're starting out and like i said i can't wait to see what we do for december 1st it's i hope it's uh everything i i've heard it's gonna be so paul you and i spoke uh earlier i i guess it was this fall about about your game and and i got a chance to play it a few times on my iphone and you're you're sitting here talking to a couple 50-year-old guys that, uh, you know, grew up on old-school video games like Atari and that thing and those things. But as you know, uh, this is a very competitive space uh, with PlayStation games and Xbox and everything else. You know, it's just, it's just some place that, that it, it's tough to, to, uh, to do really well. How are you reaching the game players today uh, in this busy space not only are you dealing with with the uh the techn technological advances with these systems but also the time itself you know kids today are are excited to be on tiktok and instagram and things like yep. that how are exactly. you getting them, how are you getting them over to playing games especially your game compared to everything else okay the way we're doing that is that you know we're starting we have our facebook site we're going to have a tiktok instagram we're going to have all those things but we wanted to make sure the game was good enough to where when they got in there that it was functional and fun to play um we didn't want to go out onto the platforms and advertise right away until it was up to a level that we thought would be acceptable so we finally got to that point now we're starting to open our facebook or uh youtube site uh TikTok and Instagram, but right now we're just doing Facebook, and we're waiting to see what happens on December 1st for the updates, and then we'll be out on all the other platforms at that point. Uh, right now, without advertising at all, the interest in sled dogs and sled dog sports has been absolutely incredible. Within less than two weeks, I've had almost 10,000 people in the site. Wow. So, uh, Paul, you had touched on uh, briefly about, I, I believe you call it Project Purple, and something to do with pancreatic cancer can you expound on that a little bit okay um i my brother was ill with pancreatic cancer here the last uh, uh you know six months or so ago uh and he got sicker and sicker and the great people at project purple without any prodding or anything else reached out to him to help him and uh you know when your family's going through something like that and people just 
out of the blue come out to help you yeah, like project purple um uh, i can't even tell you how much it, it warms the heart to see how much people care and that people out there really do care uh and they did such a great job i just couldn't do anything but feel great about supporting such a great organization they help with paying a bill or just getting you what you need or something they try and get you something to help during that time and one of the things that was really special that he, my brother loved it when he got it he got a blanket and uh, water because you know whenever you're going through something like that you're, you're cold and you want something to drink which is water most of the time and they sent him the project purple blanket and the, the mug and everything else uh, for a big glass of water and uh, along with they helped him with some bills which was so so amazing yeah what what a great organization and and how are you um, how are you involving them with the game uh, anything that we get from the game so we're initially starting out with a 10% because we don't know what it's going to make. So we want to try and keep it a little tight till we, till we see where we're going um, and how things turn out. And, you know, the more people that come in, the more people support, the more we'll be able to help other organizations. But right now, Project Purple is going to get 5% of any of the proceeds from the game. And, and with that, uh, the, the real bread and butter of this type of platform are the end game purchases. And as you mentioned, you can buy sleds and, dog food and dogs and, and all sorts of things as you work through it. That's that's the uh, financial plan of this, isn't it? Correct. Yep. That's right. how we try and generate money for these for the game to be developed further and made better and better. So the more people that go in and do things, the better the game will get over time. Because it costs money to do it, of course. Of course. So, Paul, let's shift gears a little bit and talk about uh, uh, the sled dogs that you own personally with, with your wife, Kim. <laughs> I've, I've been racing with Kim for as long as I've lived in Alaska. She is an ultra-competitive uh, dryland racer for sure. At least that's where I knew her. Uh, I assume you're, you're the pit crew of the group. You're, you're, the, you're the guy behind the scenes, and every good musher needs a good pit crew. What is your role with the uh, the sled dogs in the family? Well, I'm, I'm mainly the financial support for, <laughs> for the sled dog racing. Uh, and, you know, I, you know, I do love the dogs. I take care of them. I, I'm technically their babysitter at the moment. Uh, and so she, you know, she always has, the, where Kim goes, she'll have dogs with her. I don't, you know, it doesn't matter where, but she'll have a dog with her or five most of the time. Uh, and the other dogs stay in the house. We don't, we don't, our dogs aren't outside dogs. They're inside pets, and we love them all. They're very well trained, but we do have to keep an eye on them. And so I have to make sure they're well taken care of. So technically, I am, like you said, the the home pit crew, right? And and her her major sponsor. <laughs> so I, I know we mentioned this to Kim when we had her on, and I know another guest, uh, another friend of of Kim and ours, uh, Pam Shambler, t- was on our show, and they talked about. Uh, the the trials and tribulations of of living with a sled dog team in the middle of town. Can you give us a story or two about uh, about living with a pack of sled dogs in in uh, in, in Alaska's biggest city? Yeah, it, uh, one of the one of the issues you come up with is, of course, finding a place to run them or let them run. Uh, luckily enough, uh, we have a pasture up on the hillside where she can let them run free if she can't get them out on the sled. You have these dogs, like I said, they, they love to run. If you, can, it, you know, not letting them run is a crime. And so, you know, she trains them at least once a week and on two times on weekends over in, in Chugak. Um, they, they also are going to have a track, a new track, I believe, here in Anchorage that they're starting up. Uh, but, yeah, it's, it's a little bit difficult. The logistics are a little bit difficult. But, you, you know, you can always make it work. If you really love the dogs, you'll make it work. And, uh, and we do. We always make it work for them. And, uh, you know, feeding them, that's a trick, you know, but we it gets done and they're all well behaved. Every You know, when they're puppies, you always have the puppy problems. Uh, we lost a couch to a sled dog that was a little hyper. Uh, so we replaced the couch. <laughs> it's right. that simple. Right. KP, anything else for Paul before we go? No, Paul, wanted to thank you for uh, doing all you do for our sled dog community. Uh, it's uh, very uh, uh, heartwarming to have people like you passionate about our sport uh, to go out of their way, spend their money, spend their time to develop a way to help this sport. 
uh, coming with great ideas like yours, uh, a video game for mushing. Uh, again, please give us the name of the website and how our listeners can uh, get to play this game and try it. I will do. I'll send you the link and uh, I'll, I'll text that to you after this. I want to thank you, Robert uh, and UKP. Really appreciate what you guys do. We, we want to take care of the dogs. They're the finest athletes in the world and they deserve that respect. So I'm, I'm with you guys on all of that. Very good. Very good. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. And on behalf of my co-host and our guest today, this is Robert for the Dog Driver Podcast. We will see you guys next time. Goodbye. From First Paw Media, this is the Dog Driver Show. We hope you enjoyed this podcast, and we invite you to subscribe in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. You'll find a link on the episode notes. You can tap or swipe on the episode cover art, and you can see some offers from our sponsors. You can support our show by supporting them. If you like what you have heard, we would love it if you could give us a five-star rating and tell your friends how to subscribe, too. Your hosts are Robert Forto and Kurosh Parto. Our producer is Robert Forto and created for First Paw Media. Did you know that Alaska Dog Works trains service dogs for those in need throughout North America? Each and every service dog that is trained through the Lead Dog Service Dog Program and Michelle Forto and her team has an individual training plan. We train for autistic, mobility, psychiatric, and PTSD for our soldiers for service work. If you know of someone that may need a service dog, please take a moment and check out Alaska Dog Works on social media and at alaskadogworks.com.